announced they're having its best day in a month on news that it will become prime contractor for the U.S. Army's Titan program to build an AI-enabled vehicle. Initial contract, $178 million for the first 10 prototypes. This is a high-profile win for Palantir, which the military picked over an industry stalwart, RTX. Marks the first time a software company becomes prime contractor of a big hardware program. You can see shares end of the day up about 10 percent. Well, Palantir's chief technology officer, Sham Sankar, joins us now exclusively to discuss. Sham, it's great to have you back on the show. Welcome. Thanks, Morgan. Great to be back with you. All right. So this is so this is significant. It's meaningful for the company, as I just mentioned, this milestone of, of being a software company that is now prime contractor for a high profile hardware program. What is this? enable for Palantir, and how does it speak to the role that software, and particularly AI, is increasingly playing in military applications? We've been talking for a while about how, how software is eating the world. I think this is a manifestation of just that here. We have a vehicle that you wouldn't traditionally as associate with a software company, but we are, we are delivering an AI-defined vehicle that's going to provide deep sensing to enable long-range precision fires. Uh, and really, this, this vehicle was built around the soldier to enable their workflows. And it's another manifestation of how AI is changing the face of warfare. So Bank of America today writes a note. They say, we see the win as cementing Palantir as an AI prime in the world of defense and anticipate further penetration opportunities. Um, I, I wonder what this means in terms of possible future competitions from a prime perspective, but also perhaps just as importantly, given the role your technology is playing and the fact that it is now being tested and sort of seen as a gold standard, at least based on my own reporting among many senior DOD officials, um, as a supplier, too. Yeah, I think this is big for really two reasons. We talk about the F-35 as a, a flying computer. Uh, we, we talk about uh, Tesla having disrupted automotive by building a software-defined vehicle. It, it sets a very clear path where software is the most important weapon system. It is how we deliver outsized lethality on the battlefield. And it, it paves a way, and this is really the second point, for the broader defense tech ecosystem. We think about the capital that's been employed here, the, the, the amount of innovations and founders that are, that are bringing new capabilities to bear. It, it really shows that the department is very serious about enabling new entrants to deliver entirely new capabilities uh, to transform the battle space. Yeah. Um, the defense business, or I guess you say the government business, is still the largest for Palantir by revenue. But we know, looking at last quarter's earnings, that U.S. commercial business is just surging in terms of growth right now. Tomorrow, we've got AIPCon. This is your artificial intelligence platform con. And it says in a, a Palantir tweet that after nearly 850 boot camps, that your customers are going to show some of what they've built with AIP. The last time you and I spoke on this show, you were talking about those boot camps and how aggressively potential customers have been uh, utilizing them. What are you seeing now? What can you preview for us ahead of this event tomorrow? Yeah, we have over 200 customers here. I'm here in Palo Alto for the conference. Uh, we're going to have some great keynotes that will be live stream. Customers showing what they actually built in the boot camp, how they're using this capability. We'll preview some of the, the latest and greatest capabilities in the platform itself. But we, we couldn't be more excited. Everything is, is accelerating around this experiential experience. You come to this boot camp. We're not talking about eight weeks. We're talking about eight hours where you're going to leave with a production-ready use case that can start transforming your business. And that duality of having been inspired about the art of what's possible with AI, and having delivered a use case in eight hours, it, it's really fueling the growth. And you see that with the 70% growth in our U.S. commercial business uh, in Q4. Shime, uh, I'm not deep, clearly, in the defense business like Morgan is, so I want to understand more clearly what's different about this for Palantir. And when I look at who you're bringing along with you in this uh, Titan deal, the likes of Anderl, L3, Harris, Northrop Grumman, is it sort of like when you're having your house renovated and you have a lead contractor who brings in subcontractors to get the full job done? Are you like the lead contractor here and it's the first time a software company is serving in that kind of role? Yes, and I would say more precisely, the entire vehicle and the capabilities of this vehicle are derived and designed around the software. And so we have a great team, the super friends here, who have, have enabled us to translate the software vision into the actual hardware itself and the performance and integration with the space-based sensors, terrestrial sensors, the rest of really what comprises the kill chain to deliver those long-range precision fires. And I would view this as, as one of the pillars of what the department calls joint all-domain command and control, JADC2, which is, is really the embodiment of using software to tie together your, your sensors and your shooters to deliver effects, to have information dominance on the battle space.